Hi, this is Frederick from Detroit Berlin, a channel about Eurorack gear, synthesizers and music production in general. This video will be about the Clavis Flex Shaper. It's kind of a wave shaper, but it's extremely flexible, precise, and you can have total control over the parameters. I will explain in a moment. First, let's take a look at what the Flex Shaper is doing. A pure, really nice sine wave is going into the input. You can add gain, you can control it so that it does or does not clip. You can also put a VCA in front so you can even dynamically input the signal to the Flex Shaper and that will have a really nice effect too. So you have two LEDs to see if the signal is clipping or the signal is good. Then you got a bipolar button. If you send it a bipolar signal, signal that goes below and above zero uh, volt, then put it on bipolar. If you use like an ADSR, which is really nice to use with the flex shaper, then you can put it on unipolar. Then we come to the shaper section. So you got five points, the ceiling, the mid up, the halfway, the mid down and the floor point. And what this does, if you have a waveform and you have the lowest point of the waveform and the highest point and all the points in between, it actually, it takes those points, those voltage levels and those voltage levels you can, whether manually with these knobs, tweak and shape the signal this way, or you can input a control voltage, whether it be an LFO or any other kind of control voltage, even audio rate, you can input it and you can dynamically control the position of that level. So it kind of maps the waveform and then you can move those points. You get five points, like I mentioned. And then you got a unipolar and a bipolar output, which is also really useful. Let's have a look at how the patch is evolving the signal. On the oscilloscope, you can see the green and the red line. The red line is the original output from the quadrature through zero VCO. The green one is the signal affected by the flex shaper. So I'm going to put my headphones back on and go over the ways that you can control this unit. So I just matched the output from the flex shaper and the input from the flex shaper, the sine wave, I try to match it exactly. It's really close. So now we can watch on the oscilloscope what the flex shaper and the control voltages going in are actually doing. So let's start with the first, the ceiling, and the ceiling is the mud wheel output. So the ceiling is the highest point of the wave shape. When I take it down, then I create kind of a Batman signal, like two pointy ears, because I take the highest signal and I put it down. So let's have a listen to how it sounds. So that's that. Now let's modulate it with the mud wheel because the mud wheel is going to that first CV input, the ceiling section of the flex shaper. So you can manually modulate it by the mud wheel or by any other CV or audio rate signal. Put it back in the original position, and the original position is showed by those dots. So if you match the dots, that's the original position, you can offset it and then use the modulation wheel or any other kind of CV source to control it or to put it back in the 
original position with using the CV voltage. Mid-up section. It will take another point and you can bring that down or you can bring that up because it's not the highest point. You can move it up or you can move it down. So let's manually do this. So with the mid up, I'm using the output from the mix switch. I'm using the mix switch in sequencer mode. So every time I tap a key, it will progress and add a voltage. I'm using that to control the mid up section. So manually put it all the way down. Now let's see. It's taking different points every time I press a key because the sequencer is controlling. That mid-up section halfway I'm controlling with the standard VCO from Duffer, also pitch tracked with the Moog Matriarch. So when I go up, then it follows the pitch. And this is audio modulation, so you can modulate it with audio. And it really enriches the sine wave. thing is it applies that audio modulation just in a section of the waveform so you keep a little bit of the waveform or you modulate those other sections with other modulation sources like the mud wheel we talked about so you audio modulate only that little section you can also use multiple oscillators in different uh, tunings to modulate the whole wave shape you can also do that it is extremely versatile this flex shaper and i really like to be in control of my parameters and be precise Let's move on. We got the mid down and the mid down is of course the lower half between the mid and the floor. So the mid down Then you control that signal. If we move both we can make it brighter, make it sound higher pitched, add some modulation to the midsection, And I think it sounds amazing. So let's put it back. And then, yeah, you got the floor section, it's the bottom. You can also move that 
and the floor section I'm controlling with the aftertouch. The mid down I was controlling with the build up and drop so So let's go over all the inputs, outputs and knobs and buttons starting at the top you've got the input signal which you can input DC signals, audio rate signals, it's really versatile. Then you got two LEDs, the top LED lights up red when the signal is clipping. With clipping you can shape the signal also, so that's really nice. The lower LED is the LED that lights up green when the signal is in an optimal uh, volume which of course you can go lower and higher depending on what you want to achieve with the sound. Here you got the gain knob and the gain knob is to adjust the level of the input so you can add some gain, you can drive the signal, you can add some distortion, some clipping and yeah that way you can also shape the signal. Then you got a button that switches unipolar bipolar input so that the module knows what you're sending into the module. Of course with VCOs or LFOs you can use it in bipolar mode. Do you use an ADSR or an LFO that is offset? Then you could use the unipolar input. You got the inputs of the five mapping points to CV control them and then you got the knobs to manually offset that mapping point. Then you got these dots that depict the original position so you know where to put the knobs if you want to make it kind of in the default setting so the incoming signal will be kind of the same as the outgoing signal and from there on you can offset it or just modulate it by voltages. And then at the bottom you got the unipolar and the bipolar output. Really useful to have it output bipolar or a unipolar signal. So that's about it. Now let's have a look at another patch. So this patch is really simple sound wise but more complex modulation wise. I have a steady pitch on the Moog Matriarch. I'm using the build up and drop to trigger an ADSR. The ADSR is going through the flex shaper, but the flex shaper is also modulated by various sources. One of it being an oscillator to add some audio rate modulation. Then I also have two other ADSRs, one modulating the mid-up section, one modulating the mid-down section and one is inverted and the other one is normal. Let's have a listen at how this will sound. Now I'm just using the ADSR and I'm not going through the flex shaper so you can hear how it sounds normally. Now it's sustaining and now it's releasing. So again. So pretty simple. It's going up in a slow attack, then a little bit of slow decay, then it sustains at about 40% in volume, then it releases. So it's modifying pitch and VCA volume. Also have a little bit of delay to make the sound more bearable. Okay, once again. Yeah. 
Really simple sound. Now let's bring the Flex Shaper to the party with the Flex Shaper modulating the ADSR signal. This is the result. So that's pretty cool. So we can change this by changing the control voltages and have like the VCO modulate the floor and then you get this VCO sound and it will change because the ADSR will go up and down and then it will continue to this sound. Or you can also modulate halfway and then it will go through that voltage controlled oscillator modulation again. So this is extremely nice to make these kind of sci-fi triggered sounds and yeah. I think there are brilliant ways in how you can control the ADSR. I will play around a little bit. Um, maybe leave the audio modulation and maybe do it in more kind of an LFO kind of way. Let's see what I can come up with. It goes up again because Oh, really nice. Let's have And you can make a simple ADSR or a simple AD envelope. You can make it complex in, in my opinion, a brilliant way. If you want, you can even sequence it that it goes up, then it gets sequenced a little bit, then it goes down again. So you have so much control over all these parameters. And I really love this precision and this control you have over the shaping. I have multiple wave shapers already, but I don't think these are comparable to this one. I actually, I adore this flex shaper. It is a module that will make its way in many of my patches, you have so many options and it's a simple concept but it's an amazing concept and yeah it works so well it is also skiff friendly it's 6 hp wide so it's really not big and it's affordable too so anyone should have this in his system Flex shaper from clavis i would like to thank you very much for watching Hope you like this video. Give this video a like if you do. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Have a look at my Patreon page and hope to see you soon. Thank you and goodbye.